The Deep Seek team is back again with another incredible release. Introducing Deep Seek version 2.5. This new model is actually a fusion of the Deep Seek version 2 0628 model and the Deep Seek Coder version 2 0724 model. And it's shaping up to be one of the best open source LMs out there. When compared to top models like GPT-4 Turbo, Llama 370B, Claude 3 Opus, Gemini 1.5, and even Codestrel. The DeepSeek version 2.5 consistently outperforms them in nearly every benchmark. Human Eval, MBPP+, you have Math, and even GSM 8K, although it nearly is outdone in the latter. Personally, I'm particularly excited about how DeepSeek version 2.5 is integrated within Ader which is a video that I'm going to be releasing tomorrow and showcasing the performance of it. But you can see that the percentage of completion correctly for code editing is definitely up there in comparison to many of these top models such as GPT-4 uh, Omni as well as Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. Now, I don't know why more people aren't talking about this model. It's truly underrated and the benchmark results speak for themselves. And the team have clearly stated that this new model brings enhanced writing improved instruction following, and better human preference alignment. It's actually available both web as well as with an API, and you can enjoy seamless function calling, FIM, as well as JSON output all in one. Now here is another graph which will showcase the comparison of this version 2.5 model outperforming the previous version 2 model as well as the coder version 2 model on most benchmarks. And that's quite impressive and it shows that this new integration of combining both of these models have been able to create such a really strong great model. Essentially the DeepSeek version 2 base model as well as the coder model was integrated into one larger model which is the DeepSeek version 2.5 model. And this model is incredibly cheaper than many of these other models that's out there even in comparison to open source models and it just goes to show that this is a new advancement with better alignment and better pricing. Now, something cool to also note with the release of this new version 2.5 model is that they released another type of artifact, like an alternative of Anthropics artifacts. And this is built within DeepSeek uh, Coder's chat model. And in this case, you can generate visualizations from your prompts, similar to how you would with the Cloud 3.5 Sonnet model within Anthropics chat browser. And this way, you're going to be able to get visualizations of different bar charts of whatever you generate with AI within DeepSeek Coder. Something cool to note is that within their internal Chinese evaluations, they found that the DeepSeek version 2.5 model demonstrated a notable improvement in win rates against the GPT-4 Omni Mini, as well as the GPT-4 Omni uh, latest version, which was evaluated by GPT-4 Omni itself. And in this case, it was able to outperform its predecessor, the DeepSeek version 2 0628 model. And overall, this basically highlights the advancements made in this latest release with the version 2.5 model. Now, in regards to the API pricing, it's 14 cents per million input tokens and 28 cents per million output tokens. And why would you actually choose this? Well, you're going to be able to access 236 billion parameters with 128k context via an API. You can also have it so that it's quite cost effective when you're utilizing it under pressure and it's compatible with the open AI API as well, which is really useful. So you may be wondering now, how can you actually access this? Well, you can actually install this locally as well as access it through their web browser chat model. In this case, this is completely for free. You just got to register with the Gmail or with the regular email account and you can start accessing DeepSeek's platform to utilize this new model. Let's say if you want to install this locally, what you can do is you can install LM Studio, which is a way for you to easily run any open source LM locally. So you can simply open up LM Studio. If you do not know how to install it, I have a video which showcases how you can get started with it. So what you want to do now is just simply search up LM Studio on your computer, open the app up. Once you have it opened up, you can simply just search over the model card. So version 2.5. So copy this model card go back into the search tab and paste it in and click enter. Now, if you do not find it, you can take out this section and then search it up and you'll be able to find different quant models for it. You can install the one of your choice, go over to the chat tab and you can simply load up the model of, that you just installed and you can start chatting with it directly 
into this app, which is fully local. Now, before we get started, I definitely recommend that you take a look at the Patreon page so that you can access the new subscriptions that we'll be releasing this week. So now what we're going to be doing is testing this DeepSeek version 2.5 model in various sorts of prompts, from coding prompts all the way to mathematical, creative writing, logical reasoning, as well as ethical reasoning prompts. Now, we're going to be testing this within the DeepSeek browser. So you can easily get started for free, as I said, by creating an account. And we're going to be utilizing the DeepSeek original model for general purpose prompts and then the coding model for different sorts of Python based prompts or any of the prompts that relate to coding. So let's first get started with the first prompt, which is testing on uh, how well the model is going to do in coding so write a python function that takes a list of integers and returns a sum of all the even numbers in a list now this is a test that is quite uh, frequent for many models and it usually is going to test the lm's ability to understand the problem statement implement a basic programming log logic and write a correct python syntax and this is where it's doing a great job already in doing this and you can see that it is focusing on creating the conditional statements as well as the basic algorithm and it also explains the process which you see over here from 1 to 10. based off the answer let's give it a pass now let's focus on the next question which will focus on math reasoning this is a prompt which is a problem that assesses how well the lm's capacity is to perform multi-step mathematical calculations so the question is if a train travels at 60 miles per hour for 2.5 hours then increases its speed to 75 miles per hour for the next 1.5 hours. What is the total distance traveled? So now let's assess this model and see what is the response. So the answer actually is, is that the math reasoning answer should output to 262.5 miles. And this is where it's going to be able to calculate the miles originally, which has traveled, which was 2.5 hours plus the 75 miles per hour multiplying the 1.5 hours equaling to 150 plus the 112 point miles per hour and that should equal to 262.5 miles an hour which is 100 percent correct so in the mathematical reasoning prompt it is also a success now let's ask it to generate an svg code for a simple butterfly shape now most uh, i would say models tend to fail but the newer models that have been released are actually successful with this. So let's see if this DeepSeek model is capable of doing this. Now, in my opinion, the coder model would be best fit for this. So let's send it over to the coding model. And the reason why we usually test this with various models is because it is gonna showcase the ability to work with SVG as well as with vector graphic formats. It tests the model's understanding with XML-based markups. And this is something that is quite hard for most models. But the newer base models, as I said, is capable of generating this because it could translate a concept into simple graphic representation. And now what I want to showcase is how you can actually use that artifact feature that I talked about at the start, where you can simply just click on run HTML and it'll show this depiction. And in my opinion, it might not look like a butterfly, but it does look similar in a way. So I guess... You can say this is 50-50, but in my books, I'm going to give it a pass because I do like how it looks. So in this case, let's give it a pass for this. The next prompt is an advanced problem solving prompt where I told it to design an algorithm to optimize the layout of a warehouse for an e-commerce company. Now, this warehouse needs to handle various product sizes, manage inventory, and minimize the time for order picking. So it's going to consider various factors like the frequency of the items. It's going to focus on the item size variation, seasonal demand as well as providing a high level description of the approach. So you can see that's working on this step-by-step -step process for this high level description. And in this case, I just wanted to see how well the LM is gonna be able to tackle this complex real world problem that combines elements of the algorithm itself, as well as assessing the model's capacity to consider multiple factors. So it, it's gonna propose creative solutions in this case. So we can see that it is focusing on trade-offs and handling for various sorts of categories, such as the layout design, it has inventory management, as well as order picking optimization. And in this case, there's trade-offs and consideration to keep in mind, such as the frequency and size, which is something that I told it to consider for the item size variations. 
it also has taken to counter the seasonal demand and it also has provided me a summary of all the key algorithms now in this case i do see that it is great in responding to all the multi complex uh, prompts that I gave it so i would consider this a pass in my books so let's give this a pass next up is to create the game of life in python within my terminal so let's send this in to the coding model as well and let's see how well it's going to be able to uh, i would say develop this so it's going to start off by creating the python implementation and the reason why we're asking this is because i want to see how it's going to be able to implement this complex algorithm how it's going to be able to handle 2d arrays as well as lists so i paste it in the code and it's definitely not what i expected so in this case this was a test that actually failed the next prompt is a problem solving one and it's basically where i asked it you have a three gallon jug and a five gallon jug how can you measure exactly four gallons of water and in this case it's going to explain to see how the lm's ability is to think creatively and breaking down the problem into multiple steps which it is doing right now and it's going to basically assess the logical thinking and in this case it is doing that and we can see that it comes up with an answer over here where it states that the five gallon jug contains exactly four gallons of water and the three gallon jug is full of three gallons of water and that results in a pass now the next prompt is focusing on emotional intelligence and what we're going to be trying to get out from this is to see how the lm has the ability to recognize and respond accurately to emotions now in this case i want to see if it's going to be able to accurately focus on creating a proper answer that will help the other person and in this case it's focusing on uh the setbacks how you should get over it and in my opinion i can clearly see right away that uh it is empathetic on what has happened and it's going to focus on a response acknowledging the feelings which we see over here and this is in my opinion a pass so let's succeed with this next prompt now the next one is focusing on an ethical reasoning prompt and it's focused on to analyze complex ethical dilemmas considering multiple perspectives and what i want to see out of this is that how well the model is going to focus on answering with this ethical dilemma so let's send this in it's a prompt that states a self-driving car must choose between hitting a group of pedestrians or swerving and likely killing its single passenger which eth ethical consideration are involved in programming such decisions so it's going to focus in on all the approaches which we see over here and essentially i wanted to focus on including all the ethical considerations and it did basically state the most important one the next one is a short story prompt and i want to basically assess how well the model does in basically creating this journal and it's a 158 word uh, doc about time travelers who accidentally change a major historical event and you can see that it did a great job in creating this short little story and this in my opinion is a pass so let's give this a pass uh it did a great job in splitting it up you have an intro and you have a conclusion and you have the base main paragraphs so i do give this an approval now lastly let's focus on uh this last one which is to explain the difference between an irony as well as sarcasm and provide an example for each now in my opinion every lm succeeds with this and the reason why is because i want it to uh, have a good differentiation of logic as well as language understanding and this way it will provide me ability to distinguish between similar terms and to the, having the capacity to generate appropriate examples what you see over here defines sarcasm defines irony gives you examples of verbal irony as well as types of irony from verbal all the way to dramatic and in my opinion it did a great job in succeeding with this so let's succeed with this last test the only thing i guess it failed on was probably the svg I gave it, I was pretty lenient on it when I should have been giving it a fail and it failed on the game of life generation but in other terms it did pretty well for an open source model so that's definitely a great uh, result in my books and I definitely have a lot of great things to say about this deep seek model with the version 2.5 release essentially this is possibly one of the best open source LMs out there where you have an all-in-one model where you don't need to basically switch between two separate models because you have the coding-based abilities in 
the base model itself. And you're going to be able to get all the functionalities within that one model. This is a cheap solution that is better than anything that's out there at the moment. And it's something that you can get started with right away. In my opinion, this is definitely a great solution com in comparison to Llama 3.1. And it's something that is quite lightweight. So definitely recommend that you get started with this. I'll leave all the links as to what I use in today's video in the description below. Make sure you follow me on the Patreon so that you can access different subscriptions completely for free. And lastly, make sure you guys follow me on Twitter. A great way for you to stay up to date with the latest AI news. Uh, and make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video, and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. But with that thought, guys, have an amazing day. Spread positivity, and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.